to episode 7 of the Geeky Cauldron. My name is Alyssa and today I will take be taking you fuck balls, tits, and ass. Shit. Hello and welcome to episode 7 of the Geeky Cauldron. My name is Alyssa and today I will be taking you on a journey to the center of the TARDIS. This episode was written by Steve Thompson, and his last episode that he wrote, The Curse of the Black Spot, um, a lot of people didn't really like. Uh, they thought it was kind of crappy. I thought it was like, meh. By the way, my bed is not made because some diva decided to stay in bed late today. You try moving a pit bull off of a blanket. She's 45 pounds of dead weight right now, so I'm not even gonna bother. Obviously, there was a lot to talk about in this episode. As you can tell from the front and back four page notes I took on it. Very early in the episode, the Doctor and Clara and the TARDIS, and he's, they're kind of having an argument back and forth. The Doctor wants her to get along with the TARDIS, and she's talking about how it's just an appliance, and that's not going to happen. kind of sometimes makes you wonder if whether or not the TARDIS did all of this to show Clara that it wasn't an appliance. Like, it was like, well, bitch, look at me now. And as they're in the middle of this argument, uh, the Doctor decides he's going to put the ship in basic mode and let her fly it for a little bit. So he jiggles some buttons, puts it in basic mode, and as soon as he does it, they get picked up by a magnograv. Now the magnograv is being sent out by the Van Balen Brothers um, salvage ship. So it's three guys. One of them is an android. Um, he has like a barcode on his neck and like crazy eyes. And two brothers and they are salvage guys and they basically look for trash and pick it up and hope that it's worth a lot of money um so they're kind of scummy also they use the magno grab which is apparently not something you're supposed to use and it sucks the tardis in now while it's doing this the tardis is like freaking out and making all these crazy noises and they hear this rock music come out over the loudspeaker like i guess that they were listening to rock music so you heard it while they were magno grabbing the tardis and things start freaking out and exploding and clara's screaming like isn't there a big friendly button to fix this and it, there isn't and the tardis gets sucked into this salvage ship they realize that they can't get into it, so they're trying to hack at the door of the TARDIS with like, they're trying to smash at it with a sledgehammer, trying to use like a plasma cutter, none of that's working. And the android says, can't you feel its pain? Like it's in pain and it's making like all these, you know, kind of like dying dinosaur noises. And you see that there's feet underneath it. Now don't ask me how he got out because it was his feet and it reminded me a lot of like the Wicked Witch, but his feet were sticking out from underneath the TARDIS. And the, they back away and they're like, what are we supposed to do? Because somebody from the crew clearly died. And they were arguing back and forth. And then he appears behind them and he's like, it's rude to whisper. So I don't really know how he got out from underneath the TARDIS, but he was underneath the TARDIS and then he was out. I have to make an important, important note that needs to be like stressed and re-stressed and then stressed again. As a writer, I cannot tell you how good the dialogue was in this episode. Like it was just written absolutely superb. Matt Smith had line after line after line that was just pure gold and he was hitting every line. It was just, if that wasn't a testament to how awesome of an actor he is, I mean, I don't know what is. He was just fantastic. Ha <laughs> ha. They're like, well, your ship, your ship was floating out in space and, and it was wrecked and we brought it in. He's like, you want to know what broke my ship? A magno grab, which is hilarious because that's illegal, which is funny because I found the remote control, which looks like this little hand grenade in your pocket, which is so funny because it wouldn't have affected me if I had shield oscillators on, which I turned off so I could let Clara drive. Damn it. And he realizes as soon as he says, Clara, holy shit, she's not here. So he's like, we have to go back into the TARDIS. They're like, we can't go in, it's leaking fuel, it's not safe. He's like, get some respirators, trust me, this will be the salvage of your life. The little light bulb goes off in the greedy fucker's head, and he's like, oh my god, well, if it's gonna be the salvage of my life, then guess what? I'm gonna do it because I'm greedy and I don't care. He says, I will give you the machine. Now, this is, I think if anybody is really like, freaking out at this point it's normal because I'm sitting there and I'm sitting next to my boyfriend and we're like no he's not he's not gonna give them the TARDIS like he's obviously lying but is the TARDIS really broken because oh my god what is the doctor without his TARDIS and the camera then goes to the inside of the TARDIS where Clara is trapped under metal now here's something that I forgot to mention when they were in the middle of crashing and Clara screamed that thing about isn't there a big friendly button the magno grab remote like the little hand grenade looking thing that had a button on the top of it like rolled into the TARDIS and she picked it up and it burnt her hand. 
Um, so she has this burn on her hand now. Now, she's trapped under a piece of metal and apparently totally fine. Like, she could pick it up off of her and she has, like, two hairs out of place. And the only thing that's wrong with her is her hand is burned. By the way, side note, awesome outfit. I loved her outfit this episode. Would have worn the crap out of that dress. She's running around and she keeps going down all these hallways. This episode was a lot of hallways. And she sees nail marks along the walls and she kind of drags her fingers along it like seeing oh, okay someone dragged their hand along the wall that's kind of creepy and now you see that she's not alone she's being chased by this creepy thing that looks like it has its hand over its face and it's like all like stone and like lava it's creepy at this point as she's running around the TARDIS the doctor has now convinced them that they're gonna go into it obviously they get the it's bigger and he goes on the inside I get that a lot and vents all the, he vents the noxious fumes out, and now they can take off the respirators and talk. We're not even going to get there on why the android needed a respirator. We'll talk about that later. A little bit weird, isn't it? And he does this in an angry, mean doctor way that is so perfect and so amazing, and I'm so glad they, do, they only do it once in a while, because it makes it so, like, he will do anything to save his companion, and that's when he has to turn on what I like to call the Dr. Dick switch, and that's when he goes, flick, okay, I've been alive for over 900 years, I can be a douchebag whenever I want to. But I choose not to be, because I'm actually a nice person, but when I want to be a dick, I will be a dick. So he sets the TARDIS to self-destruct, and says, you have one hour, this ship will self-destruct. I need Clara by my side. And they're like, you're crazy. And he's like, didn't they tell you? Never get into a spaceship with a madman. Ha ha. And they're like, no, we're not going to help you. And he goes, all right, maybe a little gentle persuasion. Boom. I just lowered it to 30 minutes. Anyone want to go for 15? They're like, holy shit, no way, you're crazy. And he's like, well, I just want to find Clara's. And just watch how amazing Matt Smith is in it. Because the camera comes in and is slowly pulling in closer and closer to his face. And he's like, I said the, the salvage of a lifetime. You meant the ship. I meant Clara. He's like, I tricked you so many times. I'm so smart. You're so stupid. Like, just fucking, like, at this point, just... After he convinces them, we see that Clara has found her way to some sort of storage room. And we know this because we see the doctor's cradle, which we first saw in A Good Man Goes to War. And we see what looks like Amy Pond's little, like, paper mache or whatever it was, TARDIS. Then this creature thing is, like, back in there with her, so she runs out. Once again, like every other episode of Doctor Who, we have the big douchebag. So there's kind of people that are, like, oscillate between douchebag and okay, and then we have the people like the Doctor who's always awesome, and then we have the fucking asshole douchebag who everybody hates. And that's how it always is. You have to hate someone. And we end up hating the captain of the salvage ship, because he has this little scanny thing, and he's scanning the ship for parts, and the, the little scanner will tell him... All of the things that are on the ship that he can salvage and of course he scans the console room and it says like nine million things and he decides I'm gonna be a fuck face and salvage and rip apart the console the doctor warns them don't touch anything because she'll get huffy if you touch and of course they don't listen he scans the room and he comes running to the doctor and says oh my god like we should separate it makes more sense and then he sends his brother back to go rip apart the console of the TARDIS and you start hearing uh, voices, and one of them, if you listen carefully, is Susan from the first episode ever of Doctor Who, An Unearthly Child, and she's explaining what TARDIS stands for and what it means. There's a bunch of other voices mixed in there. Apparently the voices were from Rose, so the first Eccleston episode. Um, there was another one. There was Amy, I think I heard at one point in time, Smith and Jones. And there's just a lot of people talking about the TARDIS and their voices are kind of echoing all over the place. And I thought that was a really cool touch. Especially, like, it was giving that 50th anniversary vibe. Like, remember everything? Like, it's all coming back full circle. Uh, the other dickhead guy finds the most beautiful room I've ever seen in my life, which is, like, this big giant tree with all these really long hanging branches with these orbs, these glowing orbs hanging off the bottom of them that have circular Gallifreyan written all over them. And of course he's like, oh, I'm a dick, I'm gonna take this all. So he goes to plasma cut one of the branches off, and the doctor comes running in, and he's like, she is not going to let you leave this room with that orb in your hand, trust me. And the doctor explains when he tells him to stop cutting it that it, yes, it is a machine that makes more machines. And this guy's like, oh, well, you know what, I'm gonna take this orb. So he rips it off, and the TARDIS starts making this noise again. And now the android is like, listen, bro, like, you're hurting it, you need to stop. And he's like, I'm a fuckface, so no. Clara finds the library in her running away from the creepy thing. And the library is huge. And what does she find sitting on, like, a special little table but the history of the time war? And she cracks it open, and she flips a few pages, and as she's reading, very quickly she goes... 
So that's who. We know that she just learned his name. And at this point, I mean, anybody who's a fan is like freaking out. Freaking out. I was like, oh my god, she knows his name. This is crazy. What's gonna happen? We'll get to it. Another cool thing I noticed was the encyclopedias of Gallifrey are all actual words that look like bubbles stored in um, little vials. And she, after she reads the doctor's name, hears the creature again and hides behind a bookshelf that has all the encyclopedias on it and knocks one of them over. I mean, I guess at this point in time, she lost like 500 years of history because she knocked over a bottle, all the things started spilling out and making noise, and because the creature heard it, she like waved it away. So at that point, I guess this like eradicated like 500 plus years of fucking Gallifreyan history, but whatever, I guess it's not a big deal. The creature runs past her and she's in the clear again for a couple of minutes, so we're allowed to go check back in on the doctor and everyone, including the douchebag guy who has now ripped the orb off, and the TARDIS, being a fucking genius, has decided to make a complete labyrinth. They keep running out of this side and coming back in this side and running out this side and coming back this side and it's just a big, endless circle. No smart bunch time lords, no dress sense, dreadful hats, but smart. I literally love when he's mean. And I wrote in my notes right here, I love when he's mean, followed by what's wrong with his posture. So if that doesn't, like, tell you how preoccupied I was with the way Matt Smith stands, I mean, it's perfect because, like, he would have, like, spider bifida. Like, the doctor would stand funny. But it's just, it's just a cool, like, thing. I like that he does that. I'm sure his back doesn't like it, but I like it. Clara gets back to the console room, but there's no door. And you find out that the TARDIS has actually created echoes of the console room because the console room is the safest room in the TARDIS. Both her and the doctor are in the console room, but they're in different echoes of the console room. And he explains it's like a light switch. It's flicking back and forth very quickly in two different places in time. And so they're together for like a brief second. And that's why Clara can like see him, sees like when he presses a button, Clara sees it happen. When she knocks something over, he sees it happen. And he realizes that. At this point, the other guy has already, the third guy, the one who was ripping apart the console, has already been killed by some creepy, like, the creepy running creature thing. So, he's gone. Now we're only worried about the android, the dickhead brother, the Doctor and Clara. So the other guy who was kind of just like an, a mindless oaf, he's not around. He doesn't matter anymore. Gone. The Doctor realizes that they're oscillating, I've used that word twice today, they're oscillating between two different points in time. And as he is standing there with the guy, he realizes he can hear Clara's breathing, and she's very scared. And she's scared because the thing has now chased her into the console room. And now they're kind of doing a little, like, ring around the rosy around the console. Um, she stops for a second, and they kind of look at each other, and they both turn their heads, and she's like, who are you? And there's something, some sort of weird recognition or understanding between the two of them. It corners her, and she is this close to getting the bye byes and the doctor uses his sonic to, I guess, like, bring her back to the right time. And as she's standing there screaming, he grabs her hand. Like, he, she's, like, shimmering in and out. He grabs her hand and pulls her into the right time. So she punches the crap out of him. And he's like, listen, we'll talk about this later. Because she's like, what the hell? Why do you have zombies on your, on your ship? Like, good guys don't have zombies. Like, that's basic storytelling 101. Like, no, what are you doing? By the way, that whole self-destruct thing, that was a joke. I just wiggled a bunch of buttons around, and that wasn't really the case. Sorry. He's like, and I did the voice. You have to do the voice. And now here again, you see Matt Smith's amazing acting, because he's being all goofy. He's happy that he has Clara back. He can kind of get back into the way he really is, which is this really jocular, silly, like, easily distracted child thing. Man-child. And he says, you know, I, you have to do the voice. And he gets up really close to them and he's like, find her or we all die. And you're like, yes. The engine's not overheating. Nothing is wrong with it. I see I just, I can turn the countdown off as quickly as I turned it on. And he goes to do it and he sees that, okay, the engine is actually overheating. And here, I'm going to post a picture right now. Everything is like, all in different layers of circles and there were like rooms that we didn't even see because it zoomed in so quickly that you couldn't read the writing but I thought that was really fucking cool. So he realizes that the engine is actually overloading and they need to fix it or we're toast. So he opens up a little panel in the console room and he's like we're going into the center of the TARDIS because apparently we weren't already in the center of the TARDIS. So they're running, and once again Clara gets lost. She keeps getting stuck in this strange labyrinth and she starts seeing echoes of herself. And it's herself and the doctor right before they crashed. Like, it's like them saying, well, you, it's him saying, you gotta get along with the TARDIS, and her saying, you're being creepy. And she sees the doctor, and she goes to go reach out and be like, hey, what's going on? And the real doctor comes up behind her and goes, don't touch them, okay? There's a leak 
There's a rip in time somewhere. There's a rip in the fabric of time. It must have happened when we crashed, and history is leaking out. So the creature starts chasing them again, and they start running, and the doctor's like, she's right behind us. And Clara goes, she? And he's like, Clara, don't ask me about this again. Trust me, there are things that I am not telling you for a reason. They hear the ship creaking, and they're like, oh, okay. He's like, well, the fuel is leaking, and it may be causing the pipes to warp, which may cause them to break apart. Instant, as soon as he says it, pipes start ripping through the walls, like, phew, phew, and they're, like, ducking and running. They find the android and the other guy, and the android has a pole, like, right through his arm. And he's like, oh, my God. You... I thought it was, like, right here, but I guess apparently it was only right here, because he was like, cut off my arm, I'll be fine. Just trust me, cut off my arm. I'm an android, I won't feel it. And the guy's like, I can't, I can't do it. No, you tr just trust me, I can't. And the doctor's like, he won't tell you because he's a fucking coward. Now, if this didn't make this guy even more of a douchemonger, I don't know what will. Like, holy shit, worst person in the world. You are the worst person in the world. You find out that those three guys are brothers. The android is their brother. There was a accident when they were doing some sort of salvage pickup where he lost his memory, his eyesight, and his speaking ability. So they decided when he woke up that they would give him bionic eyes and a voice box. Him into this room, which is a big bridge, and he's like, you can't be in this room for more than two minutes or your skin will melt off and that would suck. And he's like, okay, we're all gonna go through to the other side. And as he walks through, he's like, this is the power source. It's a exploding star in the act of becoming a black hole. You rip the star out of the, you know, out of space, suspend it in a state of permanent decay, and use its power to power the TARDIS. So, like, we're learning such cool things about how the TARDIS works, things that we've never known before. And I thought that was really awesome. So they're on this bridge, right? And there's doors on either side, and it's this fiery, bright place. These creatures start coming at them from both sides so she starts freaking out she's like if we're gonna die in here you're gonna tell me i don't want any more secrets and he's like secrets are meant to keep you safe and she's like we're not safe and as she's yelling at him he's scanning this thing and it's like it's like status identified human status unknown 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 and they're calling it a lancashire now right before they went into the room he had the thingy pointed at clara and it said lancashire and she didn't even think twice about it she just looked at him like whatever there's a certain point in time where the doctor is being chased by two of these creatures and they're connected together and he says I'm sorry to them. So he knows something that's going on with him but he's not saying anything happening. And this is really where he says things to Clara that we've been waiting for him to say to her for a very long time. And so he... The scanner's going off and it finally says status identified human, status identified Clara. And Clara looks at him and was like, that's me. Like the thingy on the other side that was banging on the wall, that's me. And let me just take a quick second to say, I told you so. I said it in my last episode and I'm going to show you right now. Look what I said. A preview of like some creepy black figure like standing behind her and with these red ass eyes. And it looked like her, like her body type. Like it was her shape. It looked like, like... Jenna Louise Coleman, like, in a creepy monster suit. See? I was right. I was absolutely right. I knew it was Clara. I knew it was meant to be her. I knew it. Anyway, he said, The past isn't the only thing that's leaking out. It's the future. I brought you here to keep you safe, but it happened again. You died again. And she's like, again? I died again? And as she's saying that, he's like, wait, 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 if I disrupt the timeline, then this isn't going to happen. He's like, make sure you don't touch each other, because if you touch each other, you're going to reassert the timeline. And he says that to the two guys. And of course, these things are now breaking in, and they throw one over the side, and as they throw one over the side, the, the android, which isn't really an android, flips over the side too, and his brother, who had no redeemable quality until this point, helped him. And when they touched each other, they turned into those creatures. And then Clara and the doctor run away into the engine room. And when they come out on the other side, they're on a cliff. And the cliff is like a very big cliff. And there's nowhere they can go. It's huge. It's like an outdoor cliff. And she's like, do you have a plan? And he's like, no. And she's like, well, if you don't have a plan, we're going to die here then. And, he's, and he goes, well, maybe. So if that's the case, tell me who you are. I, I know you, you. You know who I am. He's like, what are you? Some sort of a trick? A trap? I met you, and he tells her, I met you when you were on a space station, and you saved me from the Daleks, and you died. I met you back in Victorian whatever, and you died, and it was because of me. And she's like, I'm scared.
scared of you. I have no idea what you're talking about. She almost falls off the edge of the cliff, backing away from him. And he's like, oh my god, you don't have any idea you're Clara. So now we at least know that she isn't malevolent intentionally, which I think we kind of all knew, because Jenna Louise Coleman just looks like too adorable to be like evil. I do not see evil coming from her. And I think like it didn't really give us much because we, we I had a feeling that if she was some sort of weapon to be used against him, she wouldn't know it. We got we got that that actual conflict, which I never thought we would get. And they actually get into the engine room because he realizes that the gap, this this big giant edge of a cliff that you see is really just the TARDIS snarling at them like a wounded animal who's hurt, like I'm gonna snarl so you get away from me. And so he gets into the engine room and he sees that the engine, first of all it looked so cool, it was all white with like cogs and things everywhere and he sees that the engine has actually exploded it and she wrapped her hands around the explosion to suspend it in time for a little bit. He, he's like she's been there for me through everything, taking care of me and, and now uh, it's my turn to take care of her and I, and I don't know what to do. And you know, this point in time, I'm sitting there going, is this fucking it? Is the TARDIS done? Is, th is that really gonna happen? Of course not, because Clara grabs his hand and he feels her hand and he feels this burn, this burn which is keep she keeps looking at and keeps showing, and it says backwards on her hand, big friendly button, and he starts hysterically laughing, drags her back to the console room, gets the little... Magno grab remote control. So he takes a sonic and you see he's like writing in it. And he's like, okay, well, I've obviously thrown this through the time rift before because there's no way that that remote ended up on their ship. The remote that was on the salvage ship had to be in their ship for some reason. It was in their ship because the doctor put it in his pocket when he took it from them when he first crashed through that, through the rift in time. And wrote it on her hand, wrote it on the thing so that he would realize it's the big friendly button. So all he has to do is hit that and then the magno grab won't happen. He'll turn the magno grab off and it'll be fine. I'm gonna change everything that happened today. And she was like, you're gonna forget everything that you heard about. Cause she's like, what do you mean I die? Like what's, what's going on? He's like, you're gonna forget all that. And she's like, there's things I don't wanna forget. I read your name in a book. And he was like, after today, you won't ever go looking for my name. She's like, you'll still have secrets, and he's like, it's better that way. And he walked away, and the look she gave him was, I got kind of a look of love. I was getting a look of love look there. She kind of smiled on him, I'm just saying. Now, the only thing that was really frustrating was we kind of got that conflict between Clara and the doctor, and it was a very big tease, because even though she found out his name, and even though she found out that he's met her before in other forms, and she's died, um, him eradicating that day means she forgot everything. So, did we really get any further? On the surface, no. But, after the brothers fought with each other and found out, the one found out that he was an android, not really, because his brothers decided to play a trick on him, the doctor tells the dickhead brother to never forget this day. They show, after he fixes everything, the, the brothers on the ship, and the third brother, the android, is being made fun of by the big Ophi one. And the other brother is like, leave him alone. Maybe I have a shred of decency left. And you're like, well, if he remembered that, who's to say Clara won't remember the doctor's name? So although initially I was like, well, fuck this. They did all of this for no reason. Nothing happened. We still kind of have that opportunity for it to have happened, and we know that the season finale is called The Name of the Doctor, and she found it out, so... This was a great episode, I don't care what anybody says. Um, I understand, Doctor Who episodes are standalone episodes, and just like what with what happened with, um, you know, in the fields of Trenzalore and that whole silence thing, those things took place in little snippets over episodes and then they built into this bigger picture and I think that's what they're doing here you know I think we found out the name for a reason I think Clara found out what was going on with her for a reason I think everything happened with the TARDIS kind of trusting saving Clara to a certain extent happened for a reason I think you know that there's gonna be some naysayers and there's gonna be some people who didn't like it but on a scale of one to ten I thought that episode was at least a nine it was extremely entertaining as a diehard fan we got to find out things that we never knew and we got to see amazingly awesome parts of the TARDIS that we've never seen before. It was important for me 
this episode was really, really good. And now we are going to see the next episode, which has Victoria and Clara, and she's very obviously Victoria and Clara. So let's see what's going to happen, because I'm really excited. Moffat has also said in an interview that the doctor has not met Clara three times. He's met her more than that. So I don't, I don't know if that means he's met her in other forms. I don't know if that means, like, according to his timeline, he will meet her again. Maybe that's what this Victorian episode is about. But I know that there's there's a lot more going on than we will ever think. And he said there's a secret that no one has ever guessed that he's heard of. So, oh, Moffat. I'm very excited. I love this episode. I now am going to go watch Game of Thrones. So I will talk to you guys later. Enjoy it. Subscribe, comment, rate. She's going to keep sleeping. Bye.